Michael Sweet and Robert Sweet from Striper. The new album is out, right? Soldiers Under Command. Actually, this is your second album, but it's your first real full album, right? You got it. Yeah. Right. First one's six songs. This one's now ten. So this is classified as our first real album. Ten variety songs. <laughs> For everybody. For everybody. Yeah, Striper doesn't want to uh, limit our audience. We want to... Uh, you know, reach people all the way from 7 to 70. We always say that seven's one of our numbers. And uh, we just want to reach a lot of people, so we design the album uh, for everyone. How is Soldiers Under Command doing as compared to the first EP? It's doing wonderful. The first day it shipped 100,000. Yes, very, so, uh, very good. I'm not sure what <laughs> sales are up to, but it's, it's charting in the Billboard charts, and it's getting better by the week. So... We're, we're, we're a group that likes to do different things, as you can tell by listening to what you're listening to right now, so... <laughs> well, here's something different, is the album cover for Soldiers Under Command is another thing that's plunged you into controversy. Uh, why the massive artillery, heavy artillery? That why the heavy artillery is because a, a lot of people think we're promoting violence, you know, our reason why we have the guns is we want people to be violent, which is not true, you know, that's not what we're promoting, that's totally against what we stand for. All, all, all we're trying to show with the guns is there's a battle going on, and we, we wanted the modern day warfare to, to show, you know, that we're fighting for good, we're, we're on God's side, and he's the, he's the commanding officer, and we're soldiers, that's why we have the modern day warfare. Right, we're called to fight the good fight, and, you know, it's not going to look realistic if you're trying to, you know, put off this image of being a soldier and, and you're standing by a rock or a wall. You know, we're trying to get that point across. Jesus made a statement one time, I've come uh, not to bring peace but a sword. And a lot of people didn't understood, you know, understand what he meant by that. But he was you know, trying to make a point just like we are. But you know, what a lot of people I think have missed is on the front of that album cover I'm holding a Bible in my right hand. And uh, the picture was even taken in the uh, parking lot of a Baptist church. And on the back of the album, underneath soldiers under command, you'll see a, a Bible verse. I believe it's 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4. And it talks about how we're to join God's army and, and fight that good fight. So like Michael said, the album cover is not promoting violence. It's just making a point that we're called uh, to be enlisted in God's army. One thing we need to get clear is I think Robert and myself sound a lot alike. So... Uh, why don't you say hi, Bob, and then they'll know who you are, and then I'll say hi. And I think that's and a great Tell them your name. All right, you okay, got it. Go ahead. So, hello, I'm Robert, and it's me speaking right now, not Michael. Hello, I'm Michael, and it's me speaking and right now. And it's not Robert speaking. Not Robert. <laughs> and my name is There, Jimmy. now you guys can tell the difference of, of who's who. The Sweet Brothers. Because you know, you've lived together all your lives, you're liable to sound kind of the same. Yeah. <laughs> that's what people have said. Yeah. There's a song on the album called Reach Out. What about that tune? Reach Out. What, what that tune is, is speaking about, by the way, I hope everyone enjoys it. And uh, what, what it's speaking about is it's telling people how Stripers reached out. You know, we've reached out. We've made a stand. We've reached out for God. You know, we're standing up for him. And we're just telling people to reach out. You know, reach out and God will reach out. You know, you, you ask for something, you shall receive. You know, you just ask, and God will give it to you. So you make, make that stand, reach out, and God will do the rest. You know? Right. God's faithful. If you reach up 10%, he'll reach down 90%. And that's what God has done with Striper. And, and that's what we're telling people to do. Hey, take a chance. You've got nothing to lose. Reach up, and he'll reach down. It, it, no one has anything to lose by that. Yeah, just do something. You know, most people won't even do anything when it comes to God or making a stand. They just, they won't do anything. They're, they're ashamed or they're afraid to make a stand. If you just do a little bit, God will do the rest. You know. Right, and he'll give you the strength to do more, and he'll give you the words to say, and he'll be right there, you know, helping you out. Now, in reaching out, though, you've been uh, plunged into huge amounts of controversy. It's been very difficult. Um, why all the controversy? I don't, what has happened? What controversy? I'm not no. Well, no, I don't Honestly. know any controversy. <laughs> when, you, when you do anything new most of the time, uh, there's going to be controversy. When you stick your head high enough that people are going to throw stones, you know, people are going to shoot arrows. And especially when you're coming out of left field, well, see, Striper's not coming out of left field, we're coming out of right field. And uh, we're doing something that hasn't been done. And we have a lot of Christian people and a lot of non-Christian people look at us and say, how in the world could you combine two elements that seem so far 
from one another and put them together and claim to be right on and claim to be rock and roll and sell records and that's what causes the controversy you know we've been banned by certain churches we've had people pick at our concerts we've had people who weren't christians upset because they thought we might be cheapening rock and roll and that's not the case you just take the best of of uh two worlds but you you put god first which is what we want to do put him first and you combine them and you got something that's happening so even in the midst of controversy uh and the controversy is there it it seems to get more controversial by the day but uh, we're seeing a lot of people, even though there is controversy, say, hey, you guys are right. It is possible to combine God and rock and roll and get something that's good. And Striper takes more heat than anyone, but you have more of an impact. Than you know something? We may take a lot of heat right now, but we know one thing. We're not going to take a lot of heat after we die. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to go to hell. And that's one thing that we want to stand up for. Uh, hell is not... A good place to be there's a lot of rock groups today and we're not coming against those guys we're just coming against the message the bible says uh hell is a bad place to be and what cracks me up is everyone who says there's no hell they're still alive and uh hell is not a good place to be and you know something that's why we use the yellow and black stripes the, those are caution colors they're used on the highway everywhere on the streets and highways wherever you go and it attracts people's attention and that's what we're trying to say is caution don't go to hell you know so we take the heat now but it's better to take a little heat right now and not go to a place that's worse you know it's it's not a good thing to go through the problems and uh, everything we go through here and die and go to someplace worse there are a lot of metal bands sing a lot about hell and satan um is that something you're trying to counteract yes (laughs) <laughs> that's what that's what the capital Y E S. It's not that yes. we're trying to counteract it, but uh, there's two sides to the so- to the story. You see, st- rock and roll is a coin. I've always told people, and right now uh, the coin has been tossed in the air and it's landing in the hands of people, and people are seeing the other side of that coin, saying, "Hey, uh, we've never seen this before, and we just think it's a good thing and it's and it's fair for everyone." to hear the opposite side of the story. The word devil means little god. Now why in the world of rock and roll does everyone sing about the little god and not give the big god a fair shake or a try? See, no one's done it. So what we're trying to be is is we're trying to present rock and roll how it really should be presented. It's not a bad music. A lot of these words and, and lyrics that have come out have been giving rock and roll a bad name. The music is wonderful and a great music deserves a great message. So uh, being that we are soldiers, we're fighting against not the people, uh, but the but the ideas that people are getting and in, in put into their mind and, and the words they're listening to that you know that God is corny, that Satan's all right, uh, that there's no hell, or if there is a hell that you want to die and you want to go there, that's one big party. That's not the case. The whole, the whole thing that we want to do, you know, is um, we want people. You know, people do have the freedom to choose, you know, and we don't want to shove anything down people's throats. We just want to play good music, have a good time, rock and roll, and tell people our hearts, tell them what we stand for and what we believe in. And if they want to, you know, if they want to follow and they want to believe in what we believe in, which is everlasting life, you know, in Jesus Christ, they have the freedom of choice to to either accept it or reject it. And, you know, we'll continue to keep rocking and and doing what we've been called to do, you know. Right, and something else, um, I'm glad you brought that up, Mike. A lot of people feel today that Striper is trying to force religion or force God on people. Striper is not a religious band, and we're not going to force anything on anyone. A billboard doesn't force an issue on some on someone, but it makes a big, bold statement for everyone to see. And that's what Striper is today. We're kind of a, a rock and roll billboard that's held up for everyone to see. You know, to state the fact and to hold it up and to say, hey, look, now it's out in the open. Now you got a chance. It's it's your chance. If you don't want God, that's between you and God. But the Bible says you either choose or you lose. And so that's what that's what we're doing. We're not trying to back anyone in a corner, beat anyone over the head with the Bible, even though we do toss them in the audience. Uh, <laughs> Just we want the people to listen to the music and then and make, make their make choice. choice. Yeah, right on. Are people listening to what Stripe Brands is saying? Yeah, a lot of people are listening to what we have to say. A lot of people are, aren't only listening. But a lot of people are changing their lives because God is using Striper and the message we have is to change lives, you know, born again, you know, which means changing. Right. And plus, we get a lot of letters 
from people, and it's up to about a thousand a week now, right. of uh, you know people who are writing in saying we listen to your record, uh, we like what you're saying. You know, we even get letters from atheists. And that is just such a tremendous thing. You know, people who are saying, hey, I don't believe in God. I don't know if I ever will, but my kid went to see you in concert. And uh, his attitude's different now when he came back home. And I don't know what it is, you know, but maybe it is God. Maybe it is you're speaking about God, but I like it. So we're getting a lot of letters. We talk with a lot of people. Um, and we're seeing that people's lives are being changed, not because Stripe is so hot, but the message that because we talk God about is, God is, hot, is so yeah. hot. He's right on, and he's, you know, his words can change people, and, and we think it's a good thing instead of uh, promoting murder, violence, rape, drug traffic, a bad attitude or ego, that we stand up and say, hey, it's time to love one another, it's time to, uh, uh, to stand up for something that's good, you know, change our ways from wrong to right. Do you see yourselves as being trendsetters, kind of uh, starting a whole new trend in music? Toward. Well, it's already happening, not with just ourselves, but there's all kinds of groups. God's taking over. Spirit is being outpoured upon the. It's being poured out upon the whole world, and there's you're seeing Amy Grant rise up. You're seeing all kinds of people making stands. Mr. T, you know, he makes a bold stand for God. People are coming out of the closet. You know, they're not being ashamed. They're 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 having some guts. You know, which is what God's all about. You know, there aren't any wimps. Christians shouldn't be wimps. You should be bold and, and strong, and again, not push it down people's throats, but believe and make a stand for what you believe in. And that's all we're doing. You know, we're seeing lives change. We're, th we're seeing things happening. So that's right. what all that matters. You right. Know? And speaking of the word trend, okay, so, uh, what Striper speaks of is not a trend. It may be something new uh, where we're the first to do it in the way that we do it. I think there's going to be a lot of people who come out who, uh, who, like Michael said, there's a lot of closet Christians who might just not... Uh, feel good about taking a bold statement on what they believe in, but we're not starting a trend. Jesus Christ has been around for 2,000 years, and trends, uh, fads, or gimmicks don't last that long, you know, but I guess as far as taking uh, the Word of God and combining it with rock and roll, it's something new. Striper wants to be a leader and not a follower, and, and I feel that in today's rock and roll, there's a gigantic clonism going on. And I, I feel good about what we're doing, not only because we know it's right, but it's something new, and it's offering something different for people, and we know that it can change people's lives. And also we're seeing a lot of people who would never stand up before, standing up saying, hey, this is great. We know there are people out there that do want to take a stand, so we feel good about it too, and we're taking a stand. There's some uh, women in Washington now taking a stand on, uh, there are a lot of bad things they say, in record lyrics. Um, it's a huge controversy also, so you guys fit right in. What do you guys think of the writing records and that whole uh, issue? How, how we feel on that is we're not for any banning of records or anything like that, any restriction of records, you know, people pulling them from the shelves because we don't feel that's right. Uh, what a few people are asking for is that parents and people who buy the records have the right to see lyrics before they buy them. You know, just know a little more of what they're buying in the album. I've done it myself. I I bought albums before, and I didn't know quite what I was buying. You know, I, I heard the music and I liked it. You know, but the lyrics aren't too clear or something. And then you get it home, you read the lyric sheet, and you see a bunch of garbage. You know, I think people just want to know a little more of what they're buying. And I think that would really help things out a lot. Uh, not banning of records. That's not the answer. It's just going to make people go out and want them more. So, right. Yeah, we're not for censorship at all. But I know one thing that we are for. Is, is people, we feel, taking the time to really write uh, lyrics that uplift people, that build them up, instead of tearing them down. Striper feels that we have a responsibility to the listening audience, you know, of the world. When people buy your records or hear you on the radio, uh, they take for serious what you say. And a lot of people today say, look, it's just a gimmick, what we're, what we're talking about is theater, it's an act, but there are a lot of kids out there who don't look at it as a gimmick, and they believe what the people are saying, and they, they copycat the situation, or uh, they really take it to heart, and we feel uh, that censorship is a bad thing, but I don't even think these, uh, these people are talking of censorship. I really don't think that's what they're talking about. Right, everybody's on it, like when I did the TV show, Hills, Hills, what was the name? Headlines, Headlines on Trial. On trial. Uh, when I did that, they were stuck on the subject of rating of records and banning of records. I wasn't even there to talk about that, you know. And 
I just kept telling him, Jesus, you know, what it boils down to is, in the lyrics, it's sin. You know, that's what it is with these groups. And groups should have more of a responsibility and, and realize the responsibility they have to their fans. And it's a big responsibility. A lot of groups say, hey, we're not responsible for our fans. We can write bad lyrics and they're going to listen to them. So what? If a kid goes and commits suicide, it's not our fault. You got to ask yourself, though, is it your fault? It, you... I believe it is, you know, the, the lyrics really matter. It goes into the kids' minds and it really, you know, it can cause kids to do things. Right, and you know what's incredible to me? I have heard a lot of rock and roll artists say that uh, they're not responsible to their audience. But isn't it funny that the audience is responsible for putting gold records on that artist's wall? Isn't it funny that the audience is responsible for packing out arenas at 10 or 20,000 people? The audience makes the group, and the group should give off a good and positive message to influence that audience not to cause them to to be full of hate or to be full of violence or to be full of rebellion so uh you know and people might even look at the striper album and say well, what are you guys doing here you're promoting violence that's not the case i think people ought to look at an album as a whole cover and record but when it gets down to it you're reading lyrics of of i won't quote anybody but when you're reading lyrics that are just obviously so blatant that all it's promoting is everything that's bad, I feel that's when artists ought to step back and say, hey, we do have a responsibility. Let's influence our audience to be good to one another. Right. Why is Absolutely. Music, why is music so powerful in influencing people? Well, because music is everywhere. <laughs> you hear it everywhere you go. You got it in your car. You have radios. Everybody listens to music. You know, maybe not everyone's into baseball, maybe not everyone's into football, or maybe not everyone is into being a musician or a doctor or a lawyer, but everybody is into listening to music, to some kind of music. It's universal and it touches your heart. It's not only just something you listen to, you know, when you hear a good song, you go, wow, I gotta hear that again, and punch down rewind. It touches your heart. And it's a powerful thing, it really is. And that's why we feel that artists ought to have responsibility to their audience, because it is such a powerful thing. Thanks. Well, what is the future for Striper's music uh, five, ten years down the line? Do you see changes or striving for what? The future for Striper is to, to do whatever God tells us to do. Uh, right now, he's told us to do this, and we feel that we always will be rocking, you know, for, for God. The future, we really don't know what the future holds because only God knows that, you know. We're, we're not ones to look into the future and think, gosh, what are we going to be doing ten years from now? We just take it day by day. We take it as it comes, and, and we take it as God gives it to us, and that's all we can do, you know. But we know as long as we're doing what God wants us to, to do, He'll always show us what the next step is. You see, He always leads His people. So uh, we're not going to worry about it because no one knows what their tomorrow is going to hold. You know, people plan a lot of things that always fall through. But we know that we're going to do what He instructs us because we are soldiers under His command. And uh, he's going to lead us and show us. So we know there is a future. I know one thing. We want to striperize the world. We want to tell people the good news that God has told us to tell people. And I do believe that since we only have two minutes of tape left, <laughs> we better wrap this thing up. So the next album could be an album of polka music then? Oh, I doubt that. Well, <laughs> no, not polka. But <laughs> we were considering... Uh, what? What was that kind of music, Bobby, that you were talking about? Mambo? No, no. not Mambo. No, seriously, uh, the, the, the music is, is, is going to remain striper. But uh, it, it will always be something that can touch and reach a lot of people. It, See, we, we want to tell people, too, you know, uh, we are very serious, you know. We do mean what we say in all the interviews and all the, the articles you read on striper. We mean exactly what we say, but we do have a sense of humor, too. You know, oh, of course we We're do. a bunch of... Uh, funny type guys we do clown around a lot so if we always sound so serious in our interviews believe me we we do have a sense of humor no we are both but we are serious about what you guys just say much. something to make us laugh and then you'll hear us laugh you know yeah well hey it's been nice talking to all of you listening to the vinyl right now and uh i guess we're gonna see you real soon what do you have to say to him mike well can you do a scream for him? uh well that's another thing michael's a little sick today so <laughs> michael's <gasps> but has inflamed the we hope you enjoy uh, the music you hear on the single and uh, the album, if you have the album, and we hope to continue to put out good music for you guys to listen to, and God bless you all, and thank you so much for supporting what we stand for.
See you later. Thank you, Michael and Robert.